Welcome to our fifth Happy Construction event. Thank you for joining us. Before we start, I want to tell a bit about our think tank group, Agile Construction TR and Happy Construction event. The platform Agile Construction TR has been founded in 2017 and has, de has developed the first Agile management experiences in Turkey. As pioneers, we have the teams of, main, of a main contractor, a facade works contractor, a design company, and the hotel operation company to thrive with agile approaches. We wanted to show the benefits of agile management appro approaches in different phases and types of companies of the industry. Since then, we have been writing blogs, organizing meetups, webinars, trainings, discussion sessions, and etc., to drive agility in the industry. We are seeking for happiness for all stakeholders from idea phase to operation and demolition. Our group consists of students, academics, and professionals. You can follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube for the next events and activities. And you can also join us to develop other projects for happiness of the industry. Happy construction events are our event series organized once a month. At these events, our colleagues are sharing their experiences of agility and practices of happiness. It lasts an hour and plus 15 or 20 minutes for questions. Please feel free to share your questions at the chat board to be responded at the end. Also, we check the YouTube channel for the questions. Now it's time to start our fifth happy construction event. Till today, we had speakers from the USA, UK, and Italy. They spoke about how agile to drive happiness in construction industry from different points of view. And today, we are welcoming Bernardo Edges from Brazil. It is great to see agility in construction is getting popularity all around the world. He will talk about lean construction, last planner, and connection to agile. Benvindo Bernardo. We thank you for accepting our invitation and sharing your experience. I hope you are doing well and happy. Could you please expre uh, express yourself, introduce yourself, and uh, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Damit. Thank you, everybody from the Happy Construction Events, Tolga, that made the connection. Muito obrigado. Uh, thank you for the invitation and for the opportunity for sharing our experience here with you guys. And I didn't know that, but I'm very happy of uh, being the first uh, speaker from South America. And it's a pleasure for me and also for everybody that's working with going to construction around uh, the, this part of the world as well. And it's a pleasure to be with you here. And I will start sharing my screen with you guys. Uh, and yeah, as Demet yes, it's talked, okay. Is it okay for you? Yeah. Yes, you can. You shared. It's okay. Okay, wonderful. And as you mentioned before, I will talk about the lean construction, and one of our main methodologies of planning and control is the less planner system, and we have some studies and also. We already uh, have seen some connections of the less planner and agile methodology. And that's something that I will bring for you today in this period you're gonna talk. So everybody who has any question or any suggestion or any different point of view, please raise your hand or send in the chat box or feel free to, to ask and for, for us to improve and make an enrich, uh, enrichment of our talk to that. To, for me, it's in the afternoon, in this evening uh, here, okay? So uh, that's the invitation of the, the, the Happy Construction event for today. And thank you one more time. And just a quick introduction about myself. So I'm civil engineer and also have master's degree in industrial engineer. And currently I am on PhD 
uh, is studying the innovation process uh, considered in the construction industry. I am a founder partner at Pine Consulting, and it's a consultancy company based in Brazil. And I will talk about the company itself. And our main focus is the lean construction. And I work as a partner and also as a manager in this in, in the projects we have. So I have experienced more than 90 lean construction or lean implementations, also in operational excellence, uh, considering the main of uh, the, the main uh, industry work is in the, the construction, but also energy, oil and gas, infrastructure projects as well. I also work as a professor for postgrad uh, courses, and the the research focus I have is also uh, the lean and also the the innovation process. And for curiosity, I'm a continuous traveler, photographer, restless, very curious. So any other subjects you can uh, have a, a chat or a coffee or beers when you could, can meet uh, personally. So. Uh, very quick about the consultancy company I work and I founded here in Brazil. We work in the number of the last year. Yeah, we work in almost all. We work in all the regions in Brazil. Brazil is a huge country as as Turkey as well, and we work from south to the north of the country in seventeen states. And since the end of last year, we have a project in USA as well. So more than 70 construction sites, four wind plants, uh, logistics centers, solar plants, power transmission lines, uh, a very important hotel retrofit in Rio de Janeiro. It's one of the cases we had last year. And also an approach towards lean office implementations. And those were in real estate company. And our team today is uh, composed of three partners, myself in the middle here, Marcos and Santiago. Santiago nowadays is based in Germany. He is working in implementation in Germany as well. And here we have all our team that's involved implementing Lean every day in all those states and regions I mentioned before. And we made our background mainly in Ux, that's the South Federal University here in Brazil. Uh, I had part of my studies made in Germany in the University of Stuttgart. Uh, Santiago is from Colombia, and we are a member from the Lean Construction Institute, the international group that discussed Lean Construction yearly. And that's are some of our main clients in Brazil. And all of them here are the Brazilians company. Considering the client portfolio, we always work with lean education and we have more than 20 trainings open and also in company trainings, considering the lean and also construction 4.0. And currently you have one course that is, is with open inscriptions, but all of them will be in Portuguese for this time, but if anyone has interest or maybe, oh, let's do an English version in Turkey or somewhere else, just call me, we can we can build something for you. Uh, and as I mentioned to them before, we also look to connect with innovation, startups and the, and the universities and the industry. So yearly, we used to have a, a, an event the first was with 100 attendants, then the second was 350 attendants, and this year we hope to get larger and larger and connect also with international studies and people that are looking to implement more technology and more efficiency in construction uh, sites and construction environment. We have some meetups that are on YouTube, if you wanna check. those. That one is in Portuguese, but we have some that are with construction and lean construction implementations in English. And one that I like it much, very much that uh, discussed the gender bias in construction industry. And those, the last two are totally in English. So if you'd like to check, just uh, look for our YouTube channel. And we used to have also one application to implement lean construction and understand uh, how can we add value in our construction site. The, that trial version is on, uh, uh, Android version, you don't have it for Apple, but it's for free. If everybody has interest, please feel free to download it. 
So as you said, our the link construction is our business is my passion is what I study and is the main focus what I'm going to talk with you to, today. And our uh, goal as a company is we believe that the construction must and can be a lighter, more productive and more collaborative environment. So I talked a lot about Lean, but what is exactly Lean? So we see the Lean as, uh, the, as a construction site, we see that in parts and paces. So we have four main principles, that's the flow, the tag time, that's the pace or the activities should happen. The pool, considering uh, the client pool, the production, and also the continuous improvement. And that's connect directly with the agile as well. So we have here some approaches to use in our daily business, considering how can we make the sequence of activities put on that on a based or in a tag time, a sequence of work, we analyze what ways or constraints you have and you put on it a daily checking and check out activities that can provide information for a continuous improvement process. But what about Lean? So let's go uh, back in the beginning of the last century. And we need to talk about Ford system before I talk about Lean and talk about Toyota system. So Henry Ford in USA put the first time the production in a line and he provided a pace and a sequence for activities in a factory. And since there, everything changed for the production systems and all the uh, automobilistic companies started to rethink the way they should and they could produce. So some years later, in the other side of the world, in Japan, Toyota understood that keep the pace and sequence was was very important and for keep the efficiency of the factory. But they understood that the client needs to pull the production. The pace must be uniform. The sequence must follow a standard. And we need to have continuous improvement checked and connected with everybody in our uh, production line. So we need to present here the Toyota house. Uh, I'd like to excuse myself because that's in Portuguese, but I will show the main words and I'll explain right now. But in the basis of the Toyota house, you have the stability. So everything you are looking is have a stable sequence and of activities. Then we go for some words that are very important that I would uh, highlight the Kaizen, that's exactly the continuous improvement. Also the standardized work and the Hejunka, that's the, the word that say, let's balance the activities. So every activity should keep the same uh, pace or the same time in the line. So that considering that we can have a stable line of production. Then we have the pillars and one of that in the left side is the just-in-time pillar. And then we have the Jidoka that just say, uh, they separate the work between machine and the human work and also have it as a, a autonomous uh, field for working and everything you want to reach it's having the best quality the uh, the best cost and uh, the shorter lead time for delivering value for the client so that's the what the lean wants and value for client is exactly what we want to bring when you apply the agile methodology as well. So considering that, all the industry copy what Toyota did. So we went it for the trucks, for planes, for ships, for clothing, for beverage, for food, for pharmacy, to the offices, and how is about construction industry. So can we have can we have the client pull in the production? Can you have a uniform pace in different kind of constructions you can we have and you must build? Can we have some sequence in an infrastructure infrastructure project or even in a building construction? Or and how can we motivate our people in the construction side to work with continuous improvement? 
How can we teach them what is necessary to make an improvement? So since 1992, we have this first study from Lauri Koskela from Finland that uh, brought to the construction industry the application of this new production philosophy. Yeah, is exactly what the lean production system towards the construction. And the main concept Koskela brought to us was we have some inputs that are ideas, our designs and our resources that we put them together in a transformation field that's our construction sites. And then we bring the output for our different clients. And all of those activities happens in a sequence of transformations and flows. And what we want to have in those transformations flows to understand what activities add value, the green part of this chart here. Value-added activities mean activities in which the resource increase in value and activities the clients are motivated to pay. So if you want a house, all the activities that are sequenced for building that house add value, but transportation, inspections, movements are not that unnecessary activities are considering as wastes. And that's what we need to understand when you want to increase productivity and efficiency in our construction sites. So I bring here on daily uh, picture about uh, con different construction sites. And the question is who is adding value here? If anyone wants to participate here, <laughs> but uh, those from Brazil here if have already seen I talking probably have seen this picture, but I have we have around 13 to 14 people working in this picture. And I can say that you just have two, two employees that are really adding value at this time this picture was made. Anyone has any points that to address who is those that who are those that are adding value in this picture? Okay, so we have two. Everybody say those two here on the basis. Actually, one is resting and the other actually is working. And now we have the topography for men here. So we have two added value employees here. Then we have two employees that are in support activities. So our activities that consider the methodology use are necessary, but don't need don't uh, the client doesn't pay for it, don't, don't want to pay for it so is that guy here that is working with the formworks that we decided to pay for a worse material then you need to repair it for a reuse and also the topography uh pure. all the other eight people here are waiting something happens and i'm i always use this picture because all construction site had some earthworks. Bigger or smaller, we have something like that. So it's a real case everybody can see. And even if in Brazil, in Turkey, in Japan, USA, we have that. <laughs> something that doesn't change. And situations like that, that we have a lot of waste happens every day. And us, we, everybody here as engineers, sometimes just pass free and they don't identify that they are don't they are not doing anything in this, the moment. For sure, 30 seconds later, one minute later, everything changed. But what can I say here? We have waste and we don't need to have all this crew here waiting for something happens. So the, the, the question is, what can I do with those people? So our, I did a study, uh, around 2016, 17, 18. And I observed more than, I made observation in more than 90 hours in different construction sites. And I reached that 74% of our construction labor time doesn't add value. So the, this is a paper that I published in the IGOC of 2018. So if anyone has the interest, I can share with you later. Uh, that shows that in different construction uh, sites like pipelines, highways, buildings, uh, railways, we we'll have different behaviors. But in the end, we have only two hours of our day with the people really adding value that they are supposed to do. Uh, the good thing is we have a huge opportunity. 
we have like 75% of time to improve the activities of all the laborers. And what bring what benefit we have if we reduce waste? I bring some automobilistic example here to show you that in continuous improvement process, we can be better year by year, construction by construction site, or and what brings it, we can see here. Those seconds wins the race. And in 38 years, it got improvements. So for sure in 1981, it was one of the best uh, pit stop we could have. But if you just make, okay, you are fine and you didn't make any effort for improvement, those that people won't be working anymore in 2019. So what we need to have this continuous question, am I good enough? And what can I do to be better? So that's one point. Okay, let's go back to construction. And what do we believe? Do you do we believe planning is a decision process regarding clear goal settings and resources to reach them? Planning is only effective if we proceed that with a control system. If we don't have control, we don't have how to plan or replan the activities. That's uh, a sentence that my advisor in the university established in 1999 and I, it con is still very uh, uh, it's current every day so we need to to rethink our the way we plan the activities that's why the lean construction focus so much in the less planner system that looks for the master plan took into a pool system in a pool planning system then goes to a look ahead planning phase then go to a short term planning and go to the daily basis of check-in, check-out. And what's interesting to understand, the master plan says what should be done. The look ahead or the medium term plan shows what can be done because here we look to understand the constraints you have. The short term plan says what will be done. And here is what I did, what the people did on the construction site. And even more interesting is that this part above, I just look when necessary. But that's the heart of our production system. So it every day must be uh, considering and is on the walls, on the hands of everybody in our construction sites. And in this part of the presentation, I'd like to bring you some examples of what we are doing, uh, ap applying lean construction and the less planner system in our clients and projects here in Brazil. So now I bring you how we build the master plan, the long-term planning, and the, the tool we, we use at most is the line of balance. The line of balance is that thing you have on the walls here. And it's a planning, um, it, it's a planning tool that brings in the X axis, uh, the time. And in the vertical axis, we have the location. So the pavement, number of apartments and the sequence we have. Each color is one activity and or one team, production team. So we can see, directly where, what are they doing in which week or day or month in which place. So, and also everybody says that we look for the line of balance. We don't need to see only the colors or the activities, but also the clear space, the buffers is the time that nothing is happening in that location. So that's one thing you can build on construction side. And that is for a building, for a real estate case. But you can bring that perspective of view also for the infrastructure process as well, like a wind power plant. Here's the line of balance for a wind power. And all the pink post-its here represent the, the, the milestone, like the deadline of the, we should uh, give uh, delivery like the, for the client of the, that part of the, the wind plant. So you have a lot of information here. The interesting thing is that we have collaboration in this process. We have people working together to bring the, the, the results here. Then we can, can have in the long term also the pool planning methodology. What's that? 
we have the milestone, the end. So let's come behind. Like we come from the end to the beginning and applying what, how can we talk to production? How many people we need to have in each part of the production uh, for that, that, that construction process? So also we have people working together. We have collaboration as well. And also we understood in the last few years that we need to digitalize that. Post-its and all the paper on the wall are very interesting, but we pass through the COVID and we understand, okay, you can make collaboration. We have tools for that. And we are using the middle. It's on software that we like a lot and we can build everything in a collaborative perspective. So here we can just put all the, the end milestones and understand if we, if we have ability to anticipate one of the, the hangouts for the final client and make an effort for be the champion here as well. So uh, am I going too fast? Any question, any point here? Is it fine? Okay, so let's move forwards in the look ahead plan. That's the medium term planning in the, the lean and less planner system. What do we want to bring? What perspective we want to have here? Constraints analysis. We want to identify the constraints and to put in an action plan for when I have it in the day in a weekly plan, I don't have any constraints for the production. So Everybody together, I bring like the contractors and subcontractors here to discuss it, to understand what kind of constraints of material, of labor, design, of equipments can we have in the next one, two, six, 12 weeks. So the link says the six weeks look ahead. So at least six weeks is what we check. But some construction sites want to look in three months, so it's 12, months, 12, 12 weeks. Uh, everybody who is watching here and wants to start applying the link, so it starts with six, it's what the literature says. If you need to look longer or shorter, the, the time and the perspective we have will, uh, will teach us, okay? And how does it actually happen? Everybody together again. So I have here the, it's in Portuguese, sorry, but I have here the engineer, I have our consultant here, I have the guy for the planning. I have the foreman, that blue guy in behind. So it's a meeting that everybody collaborate and bring the, the, the perspective and they uh, how they understand uh, the production activities then in the next six weeks. We can also have that online. And what you do a lot here is now having also BIs to understand the data you capture. So here I can see What's the most the the main constraint we have that is material? Which activity is um, uh, it's impacted? Has the impact of the this the lack of this material is the farm works and how many days I have to to make bring a solution of this constraint uh, around like six uh, eighteen days in this case for example. So I can bring all the those data together uh, throughout this project. And then we go to the, our weekly schedule and our daily routine. So it's the short-term planning. And then I activate the support chain. So the chain I used to call the engineer, the manager, the director, the suppliers, the designers to make a solution, bring a solution, a quick solution for something that can stop the production in the daily basis. So again, we have everybody together. We bring here for, I was in the second pavement of this building and I didn't have space in the in, in, inside. Let's do it outside. And I bring like the foremans, the safety crew, the guys from the logistics and the warehouse. Everybody stops together once a day to understand what should be done, what was done yesterday. Uh, how are the KPIs, uh, what, what is my action plan? And that is a real estate case. And I can bring how the perspective about a solar energy plant, a wind plant and different kinds. So everybody comes together once a day to understand what's the production, how the production performed during the period of a day and quickly bring a solution for problems we probably could have had. And then this is our last planner and lean journey. So we work in a very interesting project in South Brazil that's a large uh, 
project considering real estate, hospital, hotel, mall, and urban and infrastructure works in a very emblematic spot of Porto Alegre. And we are working with all of that work with the same perspective and methodology. Okay. Uh, and also, we work with the lean in the back office or the lean office. And what's interesting to say about the lean in the in, in office activities, we always have some lack of communication. That's the main problem. So we need to improve how the information flows between one part to another. And we have some interesting case. That's one that uh, we work with a real estate company and what was, was the goal? We worked for a lean implementation on the construction side. So we understand the pace, how the activities flows and what has, was the length of, and the duration of each uh, typology of the, the projects they have. And then we made a connection with the, the commercial and the, the project development. So we brought everybody together, understood how they would operate. The last planner was introduced on the construction sites. We develop a very important line of balance in very detail, considering every typology. Here is one of those. So you can see that the structure activities were going from down up, and then what the internal works was uh, coming down from the the at the highest level to the floor. So you can see very clear uh, the pace, one week per activity in each floor and how those activities pass through every, every slice and our every pavement. So I understood, okay, one, uh, one building with 11 pavements with 16 apartments per pavement or appears like that. We have a duration of 57 weeks of that plan how should the commercial and the product develop should operate so we brought them everybody together make a very uh, five collaborative sessions understood what happens in the previous uh, projects they have and could understand that we have some uh, approach in the commercial in the product development uh, some interface with the production and the construction side that could keep, that brought better results. So we continue prioritizing and focus on the best and the worst activities we have, and we could analyze together the line of balance and define an integrated sequence of activities considering uh, production sales, uh, product development, commercial, and also financial system for the, for the, the construction company. So we, that's one example I brought here about the link applied to the office and connected also with the construction. And I would like to talk about the, the synergy with the link with BIM, the build information modeling. And it's interesting to understand that Lean and Bean are not only syn uh, synergic in the design phase. Uh, most of people think that Bean is something about design, but when we start using Bean and using the model and understand the with the time, uh, the synergy encompasses also the entire cycle, life of cycle of the enterprise of the project we have. What are the main benefits you can Fine. The synergy reduces waste and delivers quality. Uh, we can see improvement flows and reduce production uncertain, uh, uncertainty. And also we can reduce the total production time. But it's not a magic. Sometimes what do we need to make this effort and the quality of the integration of being and lean? Uh, it doesn't work when we don't involve the key stakeholders on the decision process. Or when you use the being only for one project discipline, just I just use for the architecture or for the structure. I don't use the being during the construction phase, so I don't have any benefit because lean starts when the construction starts and not involving the supply chain. One of the main benefits of using being is that it, it can anticipate the decision of which kind of supplier of materials and all the decisions that we have in the future of our project. And for us, we have our 
uh, work uh, room. Because here we have the master plan and the look ahead planning in all the walls. There, what is being presented is one of the, the BIM models. And these BIM models exactly are helping us to understand the, the interdependency into production and safety um, structure. And we could have the decision if you could work in the drainage channel uh, and the uh, the road are both in the same weeks. So that was very important to understand what kind of solution could you bring six weeks in advance. Uh, and what we can see about BIM, most of people think, I hope that in Turkey that's better, but in Brazil, they still think that BIM is more about technology. But a research made for uh, Bhargav Dave in, in England, Bhargav is a researcher from India and made all his PhD theses in Finland and in and England. And he brings in this publication that uh, Bean and Lean are more about alignment process and people. Technology comes in the end. So we have to, to train people, understand our real necessity, uh, uh, customize and uh, change our process to understand what being is and what benefits I want to have from the, the BIM. And afterwards, I will decide what kind of software I will invest and I will bring from my company. And in Brazil, unfortunately, uh, the company start thinking of about buying a software and then afterwards about uh, training people and mapping the process they need to change for receive the BIM. And one case of a, that of a success case of applying Lean and Bean is the is the Sutter Health Pasture Valley in San Francisco, is a hospital, and this construction company applied Bean and Lean together. And what they had, uh, no additional cost, target time for seeing six weeks, six weeks, and the real work reduction on fifteen percent, considering the when comparing to the best benchmarks they had before. So are very good results applying those two methodologies and tools together. So I would like to bring us, I just stop my screen, a case that it's a, a, a company from Austria that I like very much uh, this video that uh, shows exactly a lot of digital tools, lean, lean design, being together and what kind of benefits do can we have apart them. So let me just share the screen again with you. And we can't hear the voice, but there is a subtitle.
So I, I like very much, it's a little bit uh, advertisement sometimes, but they make a very interesting approach connecting what they did with the link, with the link design, with Bing and a lot of digital platforms uh, around very interesting uh, construction sites. Uh, is it still in my presentation, the slides? Yes, you are, you are back to okay. your presentation now. Okay, thank you. So, and the agile, how does it get, how does it connect with Lean? So uh, in a few weeks ago was published one of the paper I wrote with Thiago Farias, that is one of our consultants. And also what we did was to explore the connection between less planner system and the agile methodology and most focus on the scrum. And uh, if you are interested afterwards, I can send the web link, but just look on the link construction block. We will find that, that, that paper. And some main ideas about the last planner is that's a comprehensive uh, and integrated system for production planning and control. And is a planning methodology that has, that's already demonstrated significant uh, results in reduced waste and improve uh, efficiency in the construction sites. In the other side, an agile framework is used to manage complex projects. Every construction project is a complex project with high unpredictability due to uncertainties. So it's what we have. And also requires some new developments or technologies uh, decision. The management of a project is divided into sprints in which short interactive cycles then can range for one to five, four weeks. So what Les Planner does is also divide into weeks, sprints and daily meetings as well. So what do you have when you see those together? Both ones should deliver value for customers. Both uh, looks for communication re reinforcement. Both has collaboration and commitment. Both has one focus, on, a, a very important focus on continuous improvement. Uh, we don't work with less planner and agile without teamwork. We want to control uncertainty and both have visual management tools. So those are visual. One very interesting paper that brings those attributes and those comparisons is one that we used in our paper here is the last planner system and Scrum, a comparative analysis and suggestion for adjustments. So the bibliography is here in the, the, in the left side above. And what they, they bring as a, a output of this paper, exactly what I mentioned here before. We, want, we can have value, we, can have, we must have collaboration and commitment. We bring continuous improvement. We, we reinforce our communication so, because we, have tools and uh, routines of uh, regular meetings in the weekly basis, in the daily basis, and both ones to bring uh, a better communication and, and, the, the, and support the decision-making process. What's the difference of less planner and agile? The less planner is very precise and orthogonal. They bring for the foreman exactly how much work with which uh, resource in which place and how many hours they should do. The agile is a little bit more open in, in, the, in the essence because they were, the methodology was developed more for uh, software development, design development. So we don't have exactly how many hours I do uh, this kind of development, but I need to, in the end of the day or in the end of the week, deliver something. And the last planner is more restrict because we need to have a talk time or a pace to be reached. But we also have, uh, we want to have the same uh, deliverables in the end of the, the day, the week and the period of we are working. So what are the main outputs and future implementation for those two methodologies working together? We can explore the use of Scrum's increment concept in the project design. Why not? Our design teams working in a Scrum methodology and with daily sprints and the Scrum master making the, the observation of the, the activities they should do. I think we need to improve the job 
job description and add this function of a scrum master in the construction. We don't have that applying less planner. It's something that we could and we should have. We can explore more metrics and more dashboards. So we can we could integrate the key, the key KPIs, the classic KPIs of the less planner in the agile and the scrum methodology in the construction sites. And we are need, we, we I to bring this uh, this fourth uh, output that less planner system and agile are not different, but they are complementary. And I would like to fulfill and in the end of the presentation highlighting this point, they are complementary. They are not different. So we can use both together and bring advantages with both methodology. So I would like to one more time thank you everybody with saying everybody should be lean, be agile, and thank you very much. I let here my my address and also the website of Climb and also me, oh sorry, my email and my social media's network if you want to check. Thank you very much. I hope I have I, I brought the expectation from you. Thank you. And now I have, we have time to discuss and bring some questions. Be lean, be agile, be happy, we say. <laughs> exactly, every day. <laughs> Thank you for your great presentation. It was uh, really uh, lightning. It was really great. Uh, we mostly talk about agile. And then uh, personally for myself, I can say that when I talk about agile, I impress the motivation, the engagement of people, the happiness of people. That's why uh, we call happy construction how we can create the collaboration uh, environment, trust, we, we enhance, uh, we um, focus on those points. But, but mostly, most practices depend on lean, mostly. Uh, I want to ask, uh, when we are talking to guys from, uh, from lean to agile, to their journey, there's a Another methodology, another approach of agile, Kanban. Kanban, yeah. It, 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 it depends on lean in many uh, points, but uh, lean guys uh, mostly impress on Scrum. Why don't you think about Kanban? It is, it is more likely to uh, lean. Uh... What do they say? Uh, Kanban, it's more about a visual management system. Mm -hmm. And we can see like the, the activities or mm -hmm. the constraints move in day by day or week by week or status by status. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Scrum is, is about the routine. So we have like the weekly plans, we have the daily springs. We have an action plan in both horizons. And I, I think that they are complementary. So I can have the Kanban as a tool to see what is going on the weekly and the sprints. And we also use this Kanban perspective because uh, most of them in the medium term planning. Mm -hmm. So uh, our, like I, I mentioned, we, we look for six weeks. So we can make that in a Kanban perspective and also put the tags and we use the, the planner in Microsoft or also the Trello. Do you know the Trello? Yeah. Trello, of course. I think, mm -hmm. yeah. And we can use both both two digital tools for checking the advance of the constraints through the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I understand, Kanban is, not, is more about the visual uh, management system and the sprints more about the, the routine we should have. But I don't know what do you understand about the Kanban and the, the Scrum. Actually, in Kanban, you manage the flow and you yeah. write all the metrics on the cards. So you you, yeah. you so you can predict, uh, you can estimate the time or other things because you have the data. Uh, you estimate you calculated last time or the you uh, collected last time, so you re-estimate uh, more precisely. Actually, in my, in my point of view, uh, you can use whatever you want, what you need at that point of view. You can try. It's 
because to try to experiment is the uh, first thing. Yes. You, you can try whatever works, in my opinion. Thank you for your presentation. If we have any question, you can write on chat board or we are a small group. We can ask directly, starting with Tolga. Obrigado. Okay. Bernardo, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> a great presentation, and there are lots of learnings from the presentation. Actually, my question is um, in the classical con uh, construction uh, with the contractors, there's a big resistance uh, to change. How do you uh, adapt lean mindsets uh, in your construction sites? Uh, do you mean in the contractor perspective? Yeah, the main contractor. Contractor, yeah, because most of the uh, contractors doesn't know lean approach or agile approach, and they've got a, there's a huge resistance to lean and agile. And uh, what do yeah. you do for the mindsets? I think that every change, uh, though, are, though both lean or agile are uh, are they implement some change. So in and every change cause some maybe cause some we, we, we say in Portuguese that it caused some a kind of pain. Yeah. Uh, and what do you need when you go to a company or for a project? Uh, lean and agile works with the 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 basis, the daily uh, the foreman, people on the construction side, but we must have the support of the leader, a, a big sponsor, the director, the, the owner. Uh, and that's the beginning. So uh, I, I say when we apply Lean, we take around three months to capture the first results. So through that period, we need to have a very strong support of uh, leadership. And because the people see oh, the leaders here, so we, we can keep going with them. But in this period, we have some results and this start to motivate even the most resistant. So in, I, I say you have a sandwich. We work from top down and bottom up. And uh, in the beginning is more top down, but in the period of three to four months, that's an average, we start to be more bottom up. And uh, it's something that uh, happens for us. It's our experience in most of the projects. For sure, not all, not always. Sometimes we have some very difficult guys to work and to convince. But we also have here some very good example that people since the very beginning support ourselves. As here, I see one of my Jamie here is one of a very good support uh, sponsor of a project I work uh, that helps us every day to to convince and motivate the people. <laughs> Thank you. I have another uh, question or, an, or a statement. Uh, I started to hear that in some specifications of the bidding cases, some uh, clients want uh, to, uh, to the lean construction practices to be used. They write it in the contract. They started to write, not in Turkey. I, I haven't- Not in Brazil, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but a global company, a um, car factory, uh, a big global uh, brand, wanted uh, to the uh, agile, uh, the lean practices to be used. Uh, maybe they use lean practices during their manufacturing, so they are mm -hmm. uh, they used to uh, lean practices. They wrote. Uh, to tech planning, lean practices to be used in uh, construction phase. Yeah, uh, we don't have that in Brazil. We have some cases, as you mentioned, um, we have the opportunity of working on one uh, German uh, cosmetic company mm -hmm. in, in construction of a new plant here in Brazil. And it was uh, one condition of the contract to have mm -hmm. uh, lean construction during the construction phase. Uh, I think that they have it because they uh, already got made uh, results and benefits on it on the production system or in another construction uh, process in previous works they had. And what's interesting when you apply lean, 
uh, in the contractor, in the main contractor perspective, you have more transparency. You can get to a room and see what's going on because uh, Lean brings out from the computer, uh, out from the, the, the head of one planner guy and put on the walls and call everybody together to discuss the best solution they have. And if I am the client and I want to see, probably the, the constructor will bring you to that room and show, okay, in the next six weeks, I will do like that. That's my, my strategy of the company. That's my deviation I have. So it brings more uh, transparency and make the, the planning system more predictable because every day I can control that. So I can see the deviation every day and uh, seeing the end of the week, what, what, what's the projection, the projection of the, my efficiency of my non-efficiency. So I think that uh, who already have the experience of having so good, good projects with Lean or those visual management systems, because uh, here I talk about less planner, but Lean is also a lot about improvement. And what less planner wants is bring the stability. I'm not talking about make an improve, improvement about how a guy operate like the, uh, the concrete uh, efficiency. So uh, he can work with, uh, I don't know how many cubic meters in a day and make it twice because I worked uh, with him and he's operational. Mm -hmm. That's another part of Lean. Yeah. And that's about Kaizen. That's about understanding how the labor work. I'm talking about planning and control tools, and that wants to bring the base of the house, the stability process. Uh, and I, we have a lot of, and many other things to do when we want to be more efficient, like working with the equipment and maintainment and logistics, everything can be is our, our arms and legs from the, the lean production system. Uh, and I think that's why the main contractors used to require in some countries and in some cases the lean uh, application because they had benefits and as you said uh, they have a previous benefit on the the production system they, they have actually it sounds great but uh, for in my point of view the critical thing is you invest on people you teach them or you create the uh, area to be in collaboration you they learn to trust each other but at the end of the project you lose all of them <laughs> and the journey starts from the beginning again for the next project if we could keep our people for the next project it would be, be uh, much more better much more beneficial sure. i think uh, currently, I'm working with two, uh, I have two real estate lean implementation projects, and one is one of, is one of the largest co companies here in Brazil, and one of the largest in South America, for sure. And one of the main goals of this lean implementation is the sequence between construction sites. So the, end, the beginning of this, another construction site is when the order ends because I, I want to make the better uh, uh, use the, the best way the, the people, the engineering and everybody that also the foremans, people that were working that previous construction site and also all the resources like the equipments, the form works. So we, we already have very good results on the construction site itself, but we need to, they understood them largest efficiency and the better results they have if they can sequence, make a sequence between the construction sites. So I don't do everything together in the, in the beginning of the year. Let's phase them through the year. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a second part, a consequence of the a, a, a previous lean implementation we did. Like portfolio management. Exactly. That's exactly the word they use, is working with the portfolio. Yeah. But it's a company that we are talking about from 250 to 300 construction sites yearly. 
so they have an amount to <laughs> to sequence them so it's not every company that can do that you know is there any question or any comment ml I have a comment and question. First of all, thank you for the great presentation. Uh, it seems that you had a lot of effort uh, to do. And I'm really inspired that you're both working in the academia and pursuing an academic career. And also yeah. you are in the practice and you're consulting to firms. So bringing these two sides together is really important and valuable, I think. Uh, so thank you for the introductory lean uh, construction uh, information in the slides as well. And I have a question. In fact, uh, Mr. Tolga asked a, a similar question, but uh, I am curious about um, in Turkey, we don't have um, any company, only one company, uh, Turner Construction uh, applies lean construction practices. But I am curious about what are the main motivation of these companies uh, coming to you as a consultant? Uh, are there any clients uh, who are enforcing that or are there any contracts or do they want it to um, be regarded as a um, market uh, price, for example, for the uh, clients or another thing? Or are there any policies for, uh, for, of the government? Uh, I want to ask that. And also, uh, as I understand, uh, you are consulting to lean construction firms, but um, I'm not sure if you are consulting for agile uh, practices. Uh, if uh, there are some companies that want to um, pursue both lean and agile practices, uh, as you know, uh, the priorities of both methodologies are different. For example, mm -hmm. a lean wants to uh, reduce to waste, but on the other hand, agile uh, also wants to reduce, but it's not the priority. They are trying to first uh, respond to customer, for example. There are some differences. How can you um, do the selection uh, between them when you are applying both lean and agile, if there is any case? Okay. Very good question. Well, thank you uh, about the compliments, about the presentation. And yeah, that's very, very good thing. I think that's that's something important can connect the professional activities with the academic activities. It's something not easy, but uh, we try and we stimulate our consultants also to research and uh, keep studying during the uh, also doing the, the consultancy activities. We are um, a, a, a lean consultancy company and construction now is our core business, but we also have another implementation in other industries as well. Uh, and uh, our main projects are on construction sites and applying lean construction. We had some cases that uh, the company, the, the company we work had already some uh, experience with Agile. And most of those experiences are, are in back office, not on construction sites. So we had one, one client that uh, had already developed a whole uh, Agile methodology on design process. So they have a very, very good Kanban board. They have the routine of the sprints. Uh, but they didn't work very well with the, the, the like a four weeks planning. So we, we brought something like the look ahead I showed before uh, for, uh, to, to fulfill that, uh, that missing part of the, the, the scrum. And as you, you mentioned, in the basis, uh, they have different goals. But as I highlight in the end, they have some synergy and similarity, uh, even with the goals, but not the main goal of one to another. Um, and one more question you did, uh, how why in Brazil, the companies are willing to invest on lean construction? Mainly the motivation, uh, what are the motivation of the company? Yeah, yeah. It, and and that is something very interesting and is getting uh, the the wheel for link construction and the motivation is getting even more intense in the last two to three years. 
I think uh, we have, I, I, it's not just one uh, motivation, but I think we have some group of causes of that. Uh, one is that it's, it's the market itself. Uh, uh, some years ago, it was easy to make profit on construction. It was easy to make money. Things got more, are getting more and more difficult. Uh, and even in, um, mainly in the, in the real estate, the competitive is very high. So we need to be more efficient uh, on production and costs control to bring results in the end. So that's something that motivate. And since 2014, I like to say the, this year, uh, the, the industry, the construction industry understood that they are, they are not productive. They are very uh, inefficient. Some, in previous years, they think, no, I, I'm good enough. I'm the best of that. So they didn't understand how they are losing opportunities and money on waste and yeah, everything that goes wrong. In 2014 to 15, they started to understand that. And Brazil lived a very high crisis in that period. I don't know if you remember, if you read here uh, in Turkey, but we have a very high corruption problem since 2014 until 2000. So in that period, the five largest infrastructure construction companies almost broke down uh, due corruption with the main oil uh, production uh, producer in Brazil, that's Petrobras, is a company from this, the, the government. It's a, a national company. And yeah, they all those five continues today, but they needed to change names and one is almost disappear. So the market changed. So we have five very big companies and now we have 20 to 30 medium companies in the same market. And those and a, a very more regulated market now due corruption. So those 20 must be very good. So I think that lean comes with one of the opportunities and an approach. And in other side, uh, maybe you don't know, but Brazil is one of the main countries that most study and publish about lean construction. So we have very uh, important re research centers and if you look back in the IGOC papers, that's the main uh, main conference, yearly conference. Uh, Brazil, I, I would say that Brazil is the second country with the largest number of papers published. The first, for sure, USA, and the second probably is Brazil. Or Brazil is in the four main uh, countries. You have very, you have three to four very good research centers on it. So. It's, it's quite famous here, the subject and the team. And with this market uh, changing, uh, open doors for, for this kind of methodology and investment. Yes, thank you for your answers. Uh, as I see from the literature, yes, Brazil is producing a lot of articles and as you said in the IGLC conferences that's uh, what a chance for you but uh, in Turkey yeah. I think we have a similar competition in the construction industry but anybody <laughs> does not <laughs> try to um, apply lean but we hope that uh, we will have some applications as well the bosses are looking to cut the salaries of people mm. <laughs> to make them over oh, to work overtime. The day the only solution they think is uh, to cut the uh, salaries to reduce the uh, expenses. Uh, I think we we have finished. Thank you for sharing thank you for uh, all the presentation uh, not only we uh, uh, learned about uh, lean we learned about the uh, area we learned about brazil how, how is the construction industry going in brazil it was great to hear uh, inside information thank you uh, we will uh, post this uh, the video on youtube it's really, uh, in fact, it's a live stream. Uh, everyone can watch later. Then uh, see you, see everybody 
for the next event. Uh, and uh, we wish happy days, happy uh, uh, times for everybody. See you. Bye. Thank, thank you, you David. Thank you, Tolga. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, See you next time. Thank you. See you. Yeah. yeah. Have a nice day. Maybe you can stop the YouTube if you wish.